I'm Bethany Palumbo, Conservator of Life Collections here at the Natural History Museum. And I'm here today to talk to you about our Once in a While Conservation Project. Uh, the project was conceived during the 2013 roof renovation when it was decided that while we could access these whale skeletons suspended from the museum roof, we definitely should take the opportunity. They had been on display for over 100 years and as seen in this original photograph and they were in desperate need of conservation treatment. The project encompassed five complete skeletons, a beluga whale, an orca, a bottlenose dolphin, a minke whale, and the largest of our specimens, the northern bottlenose whale. We had only six months in which to complete the work, so there was no time to waste. The first step was to lower them to ground level, making them easier to access and a lot safer to access. Uh, this was completed with the help of professional riggers. The next step was to condition assess them, and this is standard practice in conservation. Uh, assessing the types of deterioration can then help us decide what sort of treatment we need to follow. Many types of deterioration were found. Uh, firstly, there was a huge buildup of dust and debris, and this was from a, a, quite a while of a general neglect. Um, this photo here shows the level of dust on the northern bottlenose whale. Deterioration was also caused by the direct environment, the fluctuating humidity and temperature and the continuous exposure to UV rays. Over the decades, this environment has caused the bone to crack and warp, and you can see evidence of this on the skull of the minke whale. Further deterioration was caused by the secretion of natural oils. These lipids are found naturally in the bone, and um, they had a wick to the surface and oxidised, resulting in a thick black coating. This was especially visible on the craniums or areas of previous or present cartilage, such as sternums or ribs. The oil itself was also acidic in its composition, so it was detrimental to the bone. Um, we also noticed that the anatomy on the specimens was somewhat questionable. <laughs> Old wires had weakened and snapped or twisted uh, contorting the bones into unnatural positions. As a museum of science, it's our responsibility to ensure that where possible, our display specimens are an accurate representation of the species in life, and this was something we wanted to improve. So there was so much treatment potential, but we only had six months. We decided on three things to prioritise, cleaning, stabilisation, and rearticulation where appropriate. Our treatment was guided by a combination of published research and direct communication with other conservators in the field. The cleaning was conducted in a three-part process. Um, firstly, a vacuum with brush attachment was used to get rid of all that dust. Then the area was wiped with ethanol. And then finally, it was treated with ammonia hydroxide mixed 5% in deionized water. Um, the ammonia was rubbed on with a toothbrush and the surface agitated. This caused the ammonia to react with the lipids, creating a soapy foam that you could then wipe off of the surface. Um, this is a chunk of whale fat that we scooped out of the vacuum cleaner. Mm -hmm. If anyone would like to come take a closer look at it, come find me at tea time. Uh, the ammonia too would also evaporate, so there was no risk of any residues being left behind in <coughs> the bone. Here's some photos of the cleaning effort. Gemma Rabot, our assistant conservators, vacuuming. And Nicola Crompton, our conservation intern, is cleaning with ammonia, of course, wearing all the glamorous protective personal equipment. And these are some before and after photos showing the effect of the ammonia cleaning um, to the surface of the bone. The bone is much brighter with oil and staining removed. While the cleaning was underway, we began to look into our options for stabilising the bone. Um, the material selected needed to have a good binding efficiency be flexible and able to withstand the potentially high temperatures of the museum roof space. After sufficient research, we selected Butvar B98 polyvinyl butyrol resin. This is a popular consolidant used in paleontological conservation. And Paraloid B44, which is an ethyl acrylate resin to use as an adhesive to repair any mechanical breaks. We applied the consolidant by injection and um, the adhesive was just painted onto the surface, and I've circled some bits to demonstrate them being repaired. 
The final stage was to re-articulate the specimens to replace the old corroded wires and correct the anatomy where appropriate. We decided to stick with the original method of external wiring as this would allow us to use the existing drill holes and therefore limit any further, uh, further mechanical damage to the bone. With the bone reinforced, we felt that it would be strong enough to withstand the new stainless steel. Here are some photos of the bottlenose whale uh, before and after its rearticulation. You can see on the left that the rib cage is now evenly spaced and the ribs in the correct place. Um, on his skull, we decided to drop his lower mandible initially to just expose his teeth, but as you can see, it also makes him look ridiculously happy. <laughs> And here are some final photos of all the specimens before and after treatment. On the left, there's the dolphin. Next to it's the beluga whale. And then we started dropping everyone's jaws. We wanted them all to look real. <laughs> the minke whale and the orca. Orca became my favorite whale. He's super friendly. Um, and the beaked whale, of course. And the, we replaced, well, the or beaked whale actually had teeth that were in the collection. So we pulled them out of the collection and we put them back into his, his skull. So. Um, our project blog was titled Once in a Whale. And this was created to capture and convey the conservation process, discussing the material science and uh, to describe our treatment rationale. However, it received such positive publicity that the whales became stars in their own rights featuring in other creative disciplines. Artistic professionals and enthusiasts were in inspired to join us in the whale tank to film, illustrate and photograph the specimens. The skeletons featured in BBC 4's series Secrets of Bones and the project was eventually awarded highly commended in the conservation and restoration category of the Museum and Heritage Awards. The whales have shared their own complexities with us and we've learned a great deal from them. These specimens serve the museum as uh, educational scientific examples and the conservation treatment took this into consideration, cleaning and strengthening, strengthening them to withstand further decades on display. We expect them to be a vocal point in the museum for many decades to come. And thank you very much for listening.